All right, what's going on guys? It's Sam here. In today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to perform the post fadeaway in NBA 2K21 and the best badges and animations you should be using when attempting the post fade. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Pull up to door swerve. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Pull up, yeah. up. Hey, pull up to door swerve. Back in the day, I was wordless. Started from the surface in the middle of the desert with a wetter, hot enough to break a motherfucking thermos, nigga. Hey, look at the flick of my wrist. Forget... Now, why should everyone know how to perform the post fadeaway? Well, the post fade is one of the simplest post moves in the game, yet very, very effective and can be a nice bailout when the shot clock is running down low. And also, knowing how to post fade can add yet another post move to your bag of tricks when you're posting up your opponent. Now, quickly before we get into how to perform the post fade, it's very important to know some of the factors that can increase your chances of the post fade being effective against your opponent in the first place. So first off here, I have some badges that will increase or at least help the likelihood of your post fade going in. And the list right here on the screen prioritizes the most important badges in my opinion first. So first up, you have deep fades. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's a badge made for uh, the fadeaway in the first place and at Hall of Fame, I believe it increases your post fadeaway by like four attributes. Uh, moving on, we have Green Machine. I put this one ahead of Corner Specialist and Rage Extender, which are shooting badges, which just extend uh, your post fadeaway uh, range. And if you're shooting post fadeaways in the corner, uh, it'll give you boost there too. But Green Machine, I have second just because if you green a post fadeaway, um, it'll just make it a lot easier. If you can, you know, once you green one, it'll be a lot easier to green the second. And then lastly here, we have Back Down Punisher, which again, uh, like my other post tutorial videos, this doesn't directly impact the success of a post fade going in or anything to do with the animation. But having Back Down Punisher will just make it easier to put yourself in a position uh, to do the post fade away in the first place. So moving on to the second thing to know, uh, your post fade animation also plays a, plays a huge role in how much space your fade creates. So personally, I recommend using post fade three, but it's all personal preference. I know there's other post fades out there that some people swear by. So post fade three is what I recommend and what I use. But again, you can always do some search around yourself to find the best animation. And then lastly here, your opponent's defensive badges. If your defender is just a very bad defender or doesn't have very good defensive badges like uh, post lockdown or intimidator, uh, it'll be a lot easier for the post fade to go in. And post, post fades are actually one of those post moves that uh, even with really good, really good uh, defensive badges, you can still make post fades just because of how much cr space they create. So with that all being said and all the information out of the way, let's go ahead and get right into the tutorial. All right, so getting into how to post fade in NBA 2K21, I just wanna start things off by saying there are two ways to fade away this year in the game. You can do the traditional L2, L2 square left stick method, which is what I know some people use. So holding L2 here, pressing the left stick towards the direction you wanna fade. So we're gonna to fade to the right and then use the square button to shoot. Boom, green bean. Or you can use the shot stick, which a lot of people used last year. I personally used that last year, but you didn't get the shooting boost. But this year, uh, if you're gonna use the right stick that I'm moving right here, or uh, if you're gonna use the right stick to shoot a fadeaway, you have to aim it. And it's gonna take a little bit, a little bit of practice, but you do get a shot boost or a better chance of the shot going in if you aim it correctly. So we'll go ahead, I'll hold L2. I'm gonna use the shot stick here. And you're gonna see me aim it in the orange and that's actually off because I didn't aim it too well. Let me see if I can actually make one here for the sake of the video. There we go. What's well, a post? Great. We're doing post hugs. Let's do a post fade. Here we go. That's off. There, okay. It was off, but it's still winning probably because this is on a low difficulty and probably because we did get a boost, but let me do one more here and I'll go ahead and slow it down in the video. So you can see if you don't know what I'm talking about aiming again, I'll, I'll probably slow it down or I already have, and I'm trying to aim the orange, the orange uh, bar in the center of the orange. In, oh, there you go. There's a green in the center of the orange uh, shot meter. So there are two ways to fade away this year. It's actually, in my opinion, so much easier just to use the square button. But again, I'm so used to the right stick that the right stick uh, gives you a boost. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll probably be using the right stick, and it probably is in your best interest if you're trying to play at a competitive level to learn how to do the right stick. But uh, honestly, it's all personal preference and what's best for you. Now, before we go ahead and switch to we actually have a defender on us, I do want to say that depending on the fadeaway you use, um, I, I recommend fade three. That's what Kawhi Leonard has here. That's why I'm using Kawhi Leonard here in the first place. Before we switch over to Brooke Lopez, who has like fade nine, which isn't very good. Doesn't create any space. Um, fadeaways, uh, each fadeaway 
has, you know, some are just good all around and some actually have preferences. Like if you fade to the left here with fade three, it's nearly identical to fading on the right side. But as you'll see when we switch over to Brook Lopez, it is not the case. So you see they look pretty identical there. Let me, let me get to fading towards the center. They're about the same, right? They're about the same, one more. They pretty much look identical. Ah, okay, that's a little bit different. Um, they pretty much, you know, it, it's good. It's a good fade all around. Now, if we go ahead and switch over to Brook Lopez here, you'll see that on the right side, it creates, you know, some space. Not as good as fade three. That's why, again, I think fade three is the best. It creates some space. And we'll fade towards the center. It creates some space, but it's definitely not ideal. And it's such a slow jump shot. Brook Lopez's jump shot, whatever he has. Uh, but now if we go over to the left side, look how terrible this is. Ready? How slow. That's never going to create space against a good defender. Your defender's going to be all up in you. Even the AI's up on us. And that's just just terrible. That's why, again, it really, uh, it really matters what fade animation you choose. I believe this is fade 9. Don't quote me, but if it's the same as last year, 2K20, uh, this should be fade 9. And it, look, it just doesn't create any space. So again, it's really important you choose a good fade away. Uh, in my opinion, not fade nine. I, I do fade three or just play around with all of them and find one that creates the most space uh, for the situations you're in the most. And again, I don't know why we're doing a hook shot there. Uh, let me see. Let me just see one more time. If we go towards the center of the court on the left side, I think it's probably gonna be pretty bad too. Yeah, look at that. On the left side of the court, Brooke Lopez just does not like to fade. So with fades like this, uh, yeah, you, you don't want these. You want to stay away from these if you have the choice and go with something like fade three because those just create space wherever you are on the court. But guys, that is going to be it for the fadeaway tutorial. Hopefully this helped you and you learned a lot more about fadeaways. I mean, it's a simple move, but there's actually a lot to it uh, when it comes to animations and which direction you're trying to fade. You have to, you, have to, you know, in the moment, read and react and choose which direction you're trying to fade, whether it's the center of the court or the right side of the court. So if you guys have any more questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to reply. I I think I replied to almost all of them last year, but if I don't reply right away, I did notice that last year in my tutorial videos, the comment section was helping each other out, which is great to see. So if you guys have any questions, I'll either reply or someone, some, some good guys in the comments will help you out as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you're brand new, subscribe. We make a, lot, a bunch of tutorial videos and I do a lot of my team videos if you like that type of thing. And if this video helped you out at all, go ahead and hit the like button. But until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. Peace out.